Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of GGRC. I'm RC, and today we are checking out the Kindred. And as you can see by the logo there, it does say Alpha 8. Now, one of the things I'm not the biggest fan of covering on my channel is early access games. And the reason that is, is because there's so many early access games nowadays, and a lot of them are nowhere near the point of being finished. Um, but what I like about the Kindred is that it reminds you that the game is not near finish, but it also is enough of a game right now that you can actually get a pretty good experience out of it with what it currently has. And that's kind of what I'm looking for with early access games. If uh, anybody out there wants me to take a look at their game, this is kind of what I'm looking for in terms of, you know, the state of your game. Uh, I do get, get requests every now and then to take a look at people's games, and they are just, in, you know, in a, a space or a state uh, at the time where the, the game is just sort of, you know, nowhere near ready for fresh eyes or, or the public to be looking at it. Uh, it needs a, probably a few more months in the oven, you know what I mean? Uh, which isn't a problem. I know people get excited about their creations, which is totally fine, but that's uh, I, I wanted to go into that a little bit here because a lot of times I don't show these, these games off because they're not ready. Uh, but The Kindred seems like one of those games that would be fun to show off right now and then to show it off in about a year to see where it's at, you know what I mean? Um... So that's kind of like why I've had this game for probably, I would say, a month, six weeks, somewhere around there. And didn't want to show it at first because when I first played it, I didn't really fully grasp how to play the game. And uh, I didn't think it was nowhere near ready to be shown uh, in, in a video form. But I feel, feel like now it has. I mean, they are constantly updating this game, fixing it. And uh, it's to a point now where uh, they're on Alpha 8. And uh, it makes a little bit more sense. It still needs a lot of work in the tutorial category, uh, but they're updating it frequently, so much so that like just this week, on uh, October 31st and Halloween, no less, they uh, released another update for it. So I definitely applaud the team behind this, but what is the game exactly? We've been <laughs> kind of rambling now for a couple minutes uh, about early access stuff, but what exactly is this game? You can tell that the characters sort of have like a Minecrafty look, which is a very popular look for games nowadays. And uh, I know with a lot of people, that kind of shies them away from playing them. However, this game is a little bit different. Uh, this game offers sort of a, uh, a tycoon, family building, society building type of uh, experience here. And uh, there's no better way to get into it than to just get into it. So um, this is one of the things I think, feel like the game really needs to work on, though. You do have a getting started button, and you would think this would take you through some sort of a tutorial, uh, putting you in the game to show you how it works. But unfortunately, it's just a menu that shows you what all the keys do, and I don't know, like many other people, I'm probably just going to, um, you know, not, not even pay attention to this. Apparently, I just got an achievement for scrolling through all of that and it said tutorial complete. <laughs> I really hope this is not the finished idea for, for the tutorial, uh, because most people are going to blast right past that to get into the game. Tutorials in-game, it's the way to go, just to at least show off how the game works. But what we're going to do here is we're going to start a brand new game. And from here, you can pick, you know, between your, your difficulty, easy, normal, hard, uh, your world size. Um, we'll go, let's go with a medium-sized world just to see what happens. And then you hit Translocate, and it creates a brand new randomized world for you to play in. So here we are. Starting over in a new land is hard work. Assign each of the kin a job so everyone can pitch in and make this place a home. You can see each of the kin's skill level indicated by the number in each box. The higher the number, the better they are at the job. The kin's age and strength will also impact how quickly they perform every task. So what you get here is a list of all of your kin that you currently have available to work for you. And what you have to do is you have to allocate um, what it is they're going to be doing. So you can see that this, uh, this person's uh, Sadie... Uh, on their on her or his tool belt, uh, they have a hammer. So they might be good for crafting, uh, logging, and building, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, actually, uh, anybody with an axe would probably be better at logging. Uh, let's see here. I believe this is a hoe here for crops, so they would be good for... Let's see, produce. Anna has nothing, so she'd probably be better at shepherding and that, I guess. And uh, sometimes you want to give people different, uh, you know, things that they can do on the farm and, and whatnot here to develop skills. And when you get more tools that you can actually build, you can give them to more characters and they can do other things, which is pretty cool. What else can you do with the hammer? 
We don't have anybody that's good at research, so that's going to go to the people who don't have anything to do. Probably you, because that person, Anna, already has three abilities. We got cooking covered, logging. We have, let's see, mining, pickaxe, yeah, obviously. Produce, we have covered by a few people. Shepherding, could probably go to two people. Hunting, now hunting's interesting. That's something not everybody has. Let's see, how many people can we give it to? Oh, I see an axe actually appeared next to that person. Oh, so uh, it's going to give them the tool. Okay, so I see those tools that they already came with. These are tools we have left to give them. So let's put them to mining. We have another one that's for good for crafting. So let's do you. And for these other things here, you can still just allocate all of these things to them. From what I can tell, this, you know, everybody can be a shepherd, apparently. And you hit OK. And please know that you can return to the screen anytime. You, we can come back to this and, and switch up what people are good at if we so choose. And boom, there we go. Let you know that status updates will appear here. Whoops, I'm sorry. Uh, right here in the bottom left, it'll let you know what's going on. This is our, our menu, obviously. You can press tab at any time to bring that up. So I thought this was going to bring it up, but that's the menu. But tab will bring that up. And uh, what we're going to want to do first, and they did add this into your game for a tutorial type of thing, is we're going to want to start adding crops in. Crops are very important. And you can see these are our kin. Again, not super Minecraft look uh, like, you know, it doesn't have that super retro look to it, but it definitely has like a, you know, a big uh, voxel box, boxy look to it, you know. Um, but let's start planting some crops. And we can actually, you know what, let's, let's get some people mining first. Here we go. We just select all of this stuff. And whoever is set to mine will come over here and just start mining. One of the problems I had with this game when I first started playing with it uh, was that uh, when you would tell certain characters to do anything, like mining, hunting, whatever it is, sometimes they just would not listen to you. <laughs> that was getting really frustrating. And it turned out that it was just a, a glitch because it's, you know, early access. So, it happens. So they're going to mine. They're going to get materials for us. Let's put our crops over here. So when you hit crops, you want to select a line here. And then you could select... Let's do all carrots. And from here, you can select who would actually plant them. So we'll do L. And... We'll do another line of stuff here. And we have cotton. We'll have see if Cedric... No, we'll, we'll keep L doing that. Plant the cotton. We can actually plant a few other things too. We can plant some apple trees. It's oak tree, rabinia. Where's the apple? There it is. So they'll be busy planting things over there. Now, the, what it's telling us right now is that we can start crafting. So we're going to want to build something here. We have these build buttons down here. You hit build. You can go to objects. And you actually have your crafting bench right here. You're going to be using this quite a bit throughout the game. So we'll just build this right here for right now. Whoops. Looks like I killed a few worms. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that's what they say, right? When you create a farm, you got to kill a few worms. Um, another thing, too, is that every kin is going to want a bed. So we're going to place a few beds here. We're not going to put up any walls just yet uh, because uh, from playing the game earlier I found that you can actually build all kinds of beds and everything and they'll still sleep in it even when the snow is coming and everything even if you don't have walls. Um, the other things that you want to build here are smelting furnace and you also have a cooking pot which we will... Uh, let's see. Yeah, We can keep it there. Why not? And then... Uh, can actually escape out of your build menu and when you go to the crafting bench and click it you can actually find all of these different things that you can build so you can see if we wanted to build more beds we would need more wood so that means we need someone to go log some trees because every kin needs a bed so right here we could tell one person to go harvest that person's gonna go harvest tell this other person to go chop there we go now we have only one more kin who doesn't seem to be doing much We'll walk her over here to get... At least I thought. Come over here. 
See, sometimes they don't listen to you. Sometimes you gotta <laughs> tell them a few times. Alright, let's build... I didn't build all the apple trees. Here we go. And there goes one tree. While it's down, they will continually chop that to make sure everything is hunky-dory. Now, this is weird. For some odd reason, not planting all of the apple trees that I requested. They are now. I'm not sure why. Again, early access. Game is in, you know, heavy alpha state, so keep that in mind when playing. Let's see. Mine... Keep mining, peeps. Keep mining. Now, some of these trees, as you can see, have honey. Some trees have apples. We got some sort of a uh, oh, food storage is getting low. That can't be good. Need more food. But you can see this is what a, a full-grown apple tree is actually going to look like. So let's send somebody to harvest those apples. So when I first started playing this game, I wasn't sure what to think because it was in, you know, heavy alpha beta state. And, um, you know, I was having fun with it, but it was a little manic. It took me a few games to really understand what was going on here. This is some nice fresh apple trees. It should be, these are some fresh nice apple trees. Tree has no fruit yet. Okay, we can't do anything with that yet. But yeah, it took me a few games to honestly understand uh, what I was doing here. You know, that the crafting bench you actually have to click on to get to do things. Um, here, let's craft ourselves a few more beds. We got a blue one, we got a red one, and we got a white one. So someone should run to the crafting bench here. Yep, here we go. And start building us a bed. Or three. But yeah, now that I've played through it a few times, uh, and, you know, there really is no end to the game or anything. It's not like you can play through and finish the game. I have gotten uh, most of the achievements, um, so I think that is saying something for the amount of time spent with the game, at least. Um, but really, uh, it's one of those games that obviously is going to frequently change, so... Crafting bench work is now completed. So, you know, who knows if those achievements are going to change going forward. Or if they're even be attain attainable, you know, going forward. Uh, but as of right now, we have some beds. Let's put these beds down. Just put them all next to each other here so everybody can get some sleep when they need to. One of the other things I want to point out, too, is I don't know that you can hear this over the, the microphone or anything, but this game, for how little it looks, for how small it is... Um, it's actually ramping up my PC pretty big, so I, I think uh, the game needs a little bit of optimization done as well. Considering it's it's sort of a tycoon game, you know, it's it's got that, you know, build a family thing going on. It doesn't seem like it should be so resource intensive on your computer, but alas, it is. Alright, normally at this point the game would give me like another thing to do, like another pop-up here. Um, but let's see if we can send someone out to go hunt or milk. There we go. So we don't have a bucket yet. Oop, I keep hitting escape to get away from the menu. My mistake. So can we create a bucket? Yes, we can. Craft the bucket. There we go. Kin don't like to share beds. Be build each one of them a bed using the crafting bench. You can assign beds to specific kin as well, but most of the time they figure it out themselves, so I will let them do that. Alright, go get the milk. No can assign to get milk. Oops, let's go back to work allocation. Here we go. Milking. Uh, which one is Sadie? Is Sadie the one that's building? No, it's Cedric. Is this Sadie? Yes. Okay, Sadie, you're, you haven't been doing anything. Please, go get milk. Thank you. And we need some more trees done, uh, taken out here to build more beds. So let's have this guy chop down the honey tree. And get us some more wood. Should be plenty more honey in the world, right? We'll harvest some more apples. So I think this is something else that needs to be added to the game, too, is, like, instead of 
the work allocation menu, it might be easier um, to sort of like get a list of your kin on the side here and then clicking them and just being able to like kind of drag them over to a certain area. It, it would be great to have like a cheat sheet, you know, at the ready all the time to know who does what and to make it a little bit more intuitive. Because um, as of right now, going back into here and then, you know, looking at the tools and then looking at what you're doing over here with the check marks and everything, it gets the job done right now. But that's definitely a system that I think needs to be revamped a little bit. Um, we have to construct a research desk. So let's see what we can do here. We got nothing there, so research desk. We do have another bed, so that's good. Let's build another blue bed as well. Oh, maybe a white one. All right, where is our research desk? Metal working bench, which is something we will need later as well. A chicken coop, you can build a chicken coop, which is kind of cool. Uh, crafting bench work now completed. That must have been for the bed. Where is the... Smelting furnace, metal working, brown window. We got all kinds of windows. Um, why am I not seeing the research desk? I'm not really sure. Well, let's put these bit. Let's put these beds down first. That's five beds, and is that enough? One, two, three, four. We need one more bed. We'll build one more blue one. There we go. Got to hit craft first. There we go. Now he's going to sleep after a long day's work. You'll find all kinds of crazy creatures in here too. As you can see, we have a penguin here. Now with the uh, whoops, the penguin doesn't seem like you can hunt them or anything like that. You can milk the cows, but there are other creatures that you can hunt along the way as well. They do exist. Um, I don't see any right off the bat here, but you can actually right-click on them. Is this one that you can hunt? Yes, yeah, so you can shear or hunt uh, the uh, creature over here. I really wish that escape was used to like cancel out a menu. I'm so used to doing that in other games. I do it so much in this game, and it becomes such a hassle when you're just like, you know, trying to <laughs> get out of the menu. It's really, really annoying. Alright, you guys are going to mine a bit more. And it has gotten dark, hasn't it? I can't see anything. But let's build our... last bed here. There we go. Six beds, one for everybody. Now you can actually, when you play something, you can actually pick it up and move it. So we can move the smelting thing over here if we so choose. And we want to get out of there. You can only do that when you're in the build menu, though. Something to keep track of. Um, Alright, so in the cooking pot, we don't have enough food here to actually cook any of this stuff because we haven't gone hunting yet. Which is why I was checking to see if we could hunt. Um, but you can make all kinds of different food here for your guys to eat, which is kind of cool. And let's see, smelting furnace does not look to have anything useful here. But we can smelt a whole bunch of steel here that we need to use. And right now it's also asking us to use the metal working bench. Let's, let's craft a metal working bench then. Because then we can make electricity, we can make lights. There's something interesting in the distance lighting up over there. Did you see that? What is that? Well, it took off whatever it was. There it is. What is this? I don't know what that is, but it's cool. Some kind of flying bug or something. There's the moon rising right there, letting you know it is officially nighttime. Alright, let's hit OK. Let's build our metalworking desk here. And there we go, there's our research desk. So we actually need more steel and more wood. 
if we're going to build one of those. So it's interesting, the tutorials are kind of out of sync, where it's telling us to build a research desk to do certain things, but we can't until we build the metalworking desk. It should really let us know that. Um, let's see, we can craft a street light and a steam generator, but we need stone. So we need to find some gray stone in the area, which I think here is what we're going to get next here. I think this is all stone. It is. Little little thing here lets you know. We're on grass, now we're on stone. So we're going to get some lights set up for our little folk here. See, I was saying earlier that it felt like kind of a hassle trying to learn this game at first because the tutorials are not great. Um, but once you do start understanding how the game works, um, the, the last couple games that I played of this were actually pretty relaxing. Because this is the whole game. The whole game is just like tasking everybody, you know, setting them up to do different things like harvesting, mining, building, smelting, or, you know, whatever it is. And uh, it's just, it's just, uh, I get no other way to put it, but just really relaxing. It's, you can get into almost like a, a zen experience, you know what I mean? And it's a good feeling. Alright, let's create our steam generator and let's create one light so I can show you how... Uh, oops, sorry. Food storage getting low again. We'll craft one of those. We'll craft two lights. If we can. Alright, so let's go to our build menu. Let's grab our little steam generator here. And I guess we'll just put the steam generator here for now. We can always change this later. We have one street light. There you go, street light works because it's by the steam generator. Now, once we get this set up, we should be able to light up one over here. If you put the light too far away from the steam generator or anything else, it won't work. Um, let's see, if we put this like way up here, yeah, see it won't work, it's not getting the electricity, but we put that there, boom, look at that. So we can light up the crops if we want, which is kind of cool. So let's go and harvest this over here. Alright, so the one thing that we haven't done yet, we've we've built some crops, or rather we uh, planted some crops, we've built some beds and all kinds of electrical stuff and everything like that. The only thing we don't have is a house. So we should probably start building some walls and stuff, right? Now, the game actually has some designs for you to pick from. Uh, you, if you have the uh, materials to actually craft it, you can build this yourself. So it's telling you, like, you need one of these, you need one of these, one of these, you need a bunch of this other stuff, and you can just build a house and you can fill it up uh, with whatever it is you want. You can build a cafeteria. Yeah, here it is. The, uh, I think it's supposed to be Cottage House 1, but it says Cordage House 1. No big deal. Just some kind of misspelling I'm sure they need to fix. Uh, you can build an animal pen, which we actually almost have enough to build. Uh, you can put different animals in there to house them. But what we're going to do here, instead of doing that is we're actually going to build our own walls here. Now, we have iron, we have stone. So I'm thinking we're going to end up using stone here uh, to build our walls. Because why wouldn't you, right? Let's get these guys set up on mining a bit more stone since we're going to be using it for walls. Mine it up, my friends, mine it up. We are in the morning of day two. Alright, so let's start building our walls here out of stone. So, we have our stone, and you can tell uh, that we want to build a wall by this huge pillar that's right here. Whoops. Let's see, place a single block at a time. So you have a few options here. You can actually... Uh, build a horizontal strip of blocks. You can build a wall of them. And it'll give you a preview of what that's going to look like when you place it down here. You can actually build a four-walled layout as well. Like so. Now, the only problem with that is that, obviously, uh, you, you're not going to be able to... Uh, 
you know, have a door there. So you'd have to install a door on the outside. Um, so let's make sure that we have a door ready to go. Let's get out of here. Um, door, where are you? Door cream or door brown? Let's go with uh, a nice cream door. How about that? Maybe we'll do one of each. We'll put them on each side. Okay, let's go back to build. And we may even move our house here. I think this is going to be a better area, so we'll move all the beds and everything here. Let's go ahead and build our four-piece wall of stone. Whoops, that did not do what I wanted it to do. We want this. There we go. And for some reason, it's giving me errors. Maybe it's too close to that quarry or uh, this little area that's right here. That could be it. Uh, where is a better spot? We need it big enough to fit the the uh, beds in. That's what the problem is here. And we have a lot of people living in our house, so we need the space. Maybe it's just a, a matter of... Let's do stone. We'll select this again. Can we build this close? Yes, we can. You know what it probably is? It's probably just that we don't have enough stone. I bet that's what the problem is. Let's ruin that. Okay. I'm not quite sure what that sound was. What was that? Oh, food store is very low. Get some food soon. All right. Let's focus on getting this food here then. Very important to have food. Get to harvest it, my friend. Hey, why is everyone just sitting around? Harvest. Let's go. <laughs> Get a move on. And you guys, what are you doing here? You're not even mining. Come on, mine. We need the stone. What's the point of hunt, uh, mining when we should be hunting me? Alright, well let me find you a creature to hunt. Our ultimate goal here is to get that house set. So as long as we can get that set, we'll be good. Alright, we do have a sheep over here. But I don't want to kill the sheep just because we may need that wool pretty soon for whatever else. Hmm, but I am not seeing any creatures to to hunt just yet. Alright, let's go back to build. Maybe we could just use the ore. I know it's a waste of ore, but here we go. This is just an example of what you can do here in the game, at least. Is that big enough? Well, we'll find out. There we go. Yeah, that used up a ton of ore, but that's okay. We have a ton of ore here to use. And what's cool is that you can actually knock down those walls whenever you feel it's a good time. And you can reuse that ore for other things in the future. But since we're just doing a checking out video here, we can build it out of whatever material we want, right? Alright, let's see if we can get these doors in here. Build. And to objects, we have a door. Well, hold on a second here. Let me move down. This is ins ins inset a object into a wall slash fence or place one object at a time. We definitely want to place it here. There we go. Now we have a door. And I think we're going to, since we have a door in the front there, I believe it is also snowing right now, which is not a good sign. Uh, let's put the brown door right here. There we go. And we're going to move all the beds inside. Just in the nick of time, too, right? Considering it is snowing. Look at that. The beds fit in just perfectly. Very nice. Okay, we're actually going to move... Move the crafting stuff here against the house. Along with the cooking pot. The cooking pot can probably go inside. Why not, right? We'll cook inside. Alright, now we're going to move the power closer to the house as well. Put 
put it right there. So, you know, what's fun about this, I mean, you can really... You can really make this town however you want to make it, which is really cool. Move this here, will that work? To light this area? How about there? There we go, that's close enough. Okay. So we got another light shown over there. So we can honestly put lights all over the place if we want to. And maybe we will. Maybe we'll put in two more lights. Uh, we gotta use the metal working bench. Where did I... Here we go. Craft two of those. But I would like to pick it up and move it first. Sorry, dude. I know you're running over to it to craft. Oh, he's still gonna craft it even though there's no bench there. Works for me. Whatever. There we go. Someone else decided to pick it up. He got mad that I moved it. <laughs> Funny. Okay, metal working is completed. Let's build these lights. Put that light there. Will the electricity still work right there? Yes, it will. And it lights everything. Very nice. It's all about placement, right? Look at that, we lit everything. Boom, very, very nice. Someone is stuck in the doorway for some reason. <laughs> we had an error, food storage is getting low again, so let's go harvest once again. So it's good that the game reminds you, hey, get food, don't let your guys starve, right? Let's see, what else do we have that we could do? You could do a roof. Iron ore roof. <laughs> now the roof, it does look as though, let's see, we have options. Flat rectangle of blocks, horizontal strip of blocks. You can place whatever blocks you want. So if you place a block one by one, I assume you can like build this up however you want, but we'll just do a very simple roof for today, and I guess we'll stick with the iron ore, I guess. Oh no, it's not big enough. Alright. So this is the one thing that, that gets to me when I'm playing this game, is that you'll tell uh, characters to mine certain things, and they're not mining this first, which is what you told them to mine first. They decided that they're gonna go ahead and mine the iron ore over there. And then um, you'll come over here and they're they're taking like a break. <laughs> you know, they're t taking a smoke break or whatever, and you're like, come on, I, you, you gotta get the iron ore here. What are you doing? The other thing we need too is we need to send someone out to do some chopping. That guy was just hanging out in the field there for no reason. How about you go inside? There you go. Oh, harvesting the crops over here. We should probably make a put a light over there as well at some point. There we go. Get some shopping going. Well, I really wanted to put a roof on our house, but there we go. Now it's auto saving. So you can save everything as is just in case you're, you're playing the game and you want to come back to it. You can use the crafting, bed, uh, the crafting bench to make a cot. Place the cot within four blocks of the bed of a kin in a relationship. Um, so you can have your kin make, you know, make babies, and you'll have random kin show up every now and then as well to like join your crew. Um, the more the merrier, obviously, right? Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I mean, you can, you can go into options, you can go to save, and you could see here that I have a lot of auto saves and former save games and everything like that. And you can save this at any point to come back to it if you want to keep building, which is pretty cool. So yeah, besides a few of the things that I mentioned, I think that this is a very relaxing, fun little game. And uh, if you really are into town building, uh, resource management, uh, you know, tycoon type of games, I think that this is the kind of game that's going to be really up your alley because... I spent a few hours playing it already just in early access, and I've had a really good time with it. I think it's... Uh, 
well worth somebody's time. Um, at the moment, it's an early access at fifteen dollars. Um, it's another argu- argument that I have for uh, early access games. I almost feel like they shouldn't be full priced games if they're in early access. They should really give people a discount for supporting their game early. You know, um, fifteen dollars for this. Um, I I won't say it seems steep because the game does have a lot of merit to it. and It is fun, um, but I feel like it'll definitely come into its own and feel much more like a fifteen dollar game. Uh, you know, maybe within the next year that they add in a lot of the fixes and changes that they probably plan to add. Um, but I, I think that the developers have done a really, really cool job with this game, and I've been, I'm actually having a lot of fun with it. It's one of those games that I feel like I'll keep returning to every now and then just to see where it's at and to play another round of Kindred. And it's one of those games where, if you remember playing games as a kid, you really didn't mind uh you know, replaying the same first three levels of a game because you really enjoyed it. You know, like when I was a kid, I replayed the uh, Mario 1 and Mario 3 like, just like over and over again, especially the first few levels. Oh, our power went out for some reason. I wonder why. Well, I'll have to figure that out later. Incoming kin, portal activation. So it lets you know that there's a kin coming in and they're over on this side. So you can have this person actually harvesting and chopping down trees for you if you want, like over on this side, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, you know, as far as games go, uh, went when you were a kid, you only had a few games, so you didn't mind replaying games all the time. But this game seems like one of those games, regardless of what I have on my plate, it's going to be something I want to come back to once every, uh, you know, once in a while. And just uh, build another family from scratch, start from scratch again, you know? Because it's fun to start from scratch and just rebuild a house and build beds and all that stuff. So, But yeah, having a really good time with this, think it's a lot of fun, definitely worth checking out. Uh, but thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time on GGRC. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to check out some of the other GGRC episodes. And if you're feeling a little retro, why not jump into the Quake Grave, where you can watch me play through a lot of different custom maps in Quake. Enjoy.